Now, if everyone finished with the installing spec frame, we can go to the uh, folder 2016 and example one, internal measure. Is it fine? Can we go on? Can we continue? What was the last thing that you did? Uh, the very last thing. Make all this, and then you just check uh, the the binary should be generated in the that folder inside the spectrum 3D. Which binary? Binary uh, the the this binary to execute the SpecFam 3D programs. So as I said, we'll use particularly only like three commands in the first example. They can X decompose mesh to generate mesh, internal mesh. Then the second is generate databases and also X SpecFam to run the solver. Uh, so I think we'll do in this way, I will run the line by line simulations on Peloton as I'm, uh, Peloton is back, right? Yeah. So, and uh, the results, uh, we'll, we'll look at the par file together and the results already in the folder, the output in that folder 2016 and yeah, we can look together at that uh, output. So now this is the binary file, generated binary files. I'm on a Peloton. I go to the example one folder. And now we need to create output files folder to like the output will go, will be stored in that folder. So here you are, and then uh, let's look at the par file first. So this is the main uh, file, with the main information for the simulation for this example. So in the, again, it's located in data folder. So few important parameters shown here, simulation type. So we just do forward modeling here. Uh, don't need to save the forward modeling way field. We use 16 cores, this number of time steps, 2000. This is the Time step, so as I mentioned, you use TOMO as a, as a model format, which is ASCII files with the four lines header and columns where the properties are on the regular mesh. So next, what is else? This is for attenuation, for the simple, how we can simply turn off, to on and off the attenuation. So you see here, email boundary conditions for observing boundary conditions are false. So the STACY is taken by default. What else? So this is the STACY observing condition is true. And then some other parameters to create the movie on the surface. We set this parameter to the true. Basically, there are a few parameters which are very important and some of them you will learn after. Uh, this is what the wavefield component of wavefield we want to look at. So here is uh, four options like displacement, velocity, acceleration, and pressure if you do ma marine experiments. So we'll look at the velocity component of the wave field. So this is the, because our data recorded uh, 
velocity, particle velocity. And we use for this moment binary for seismogram, so we'll make uh, each file for each seismometer uh, geophone. In our work, we with this data is we use uh, seismic Unix form because it's maybe not the best option, and SDF would be better, but it allows for some pre-processing inside. So we we like this. So we there is option to write seismograms, I think in one file, but it's turned off here. So we'll create number of the files equal to the number of geophones to the size monitors. What else we can mention here? There are a lot of parameters, yeah, so you can really specify what uh, simulations you you want. So there is also a GPU, and of course it's turned off here, so you work with MPI. Basically, yeah, almost 300 lines for the parameter file. But at the initial stage, only a few of them are important. So we can also, again, look quickly at the data tomography, tomography file. That's what already shown before. You have four line header, which indicates the minimum x, y, and z and then the maximum values for x, y, and z. Basically, minimum for x and y is zero, and for the depth is minus 60. So we, our, our model goes up to 60 meters in depth. And then maximum values for the x coordinate is 192 meters and 96 for the y. And the, the z coordinate goes from minus 60 to zero. Then this is the spacing for the information below. The spacing on the regular grid, four and four meters in X and Y, and then half a meter for the vertical and direction, and number of grids in X, Y, and Z coordinates. And then this line, the fourth line, is minimum and maximum values for VP, VS, and density. So first two values for VP, min and max, the second for VS, and then for density. So this is the range of the uh, parameters which are shown below. So again, the first column is the x coordinate, 0, 4, etc. And then there's y, and then the z column. You don't have that one. Sorry? So we go to Vim data. It's not there. Uh, Everyone has uh, doesn't have this. No, we. We went to we went to the example one folder. Do you have this? So we generate the output folder. Oh, I forget this MPI databases. Are different, right? That's uh, what we say. It's not the the MPI before. It's to to build the binaries. It's not the actual number of cores we are going to use in the simulation. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, I mean, it doesn't work in virtual machine. Oh yeah, As also what we discussed. It probably will not work on virtual machine. So that's why I. Yeah, probably yes. 
So because we made these examples on the local cluster, so we went through the, you look at the part file and the tomo file. There is a force solution and stations file I showed you previously. So we try, we can try it now to, I will do this on the peloton, on the local cluster, uh, to run the, to cre uh, create the mesh. So the mesh information for the internal mesher is located in data mesh fam 3D files, mesh part file. So there is a uh, part file for mesh, internal mesher, specifically for, to build the mesh. So there is, again, some information is doubled, uh, du duplicated. So you have like uh, min and max values for dimensional of the mesh. Uh, this is, uh, corresponds to the tomographic model I showed you previously, the, these values. Uh, and we have interface files here, interface dot dot. So we can look at that file quickly. So it says that we have two interfaces in that model. The first interface has two, uh, two points and X and Y and the spacing. So basically at the corners, the points at the corners. And this corresponds to the to the bottom of the model. So by, basically by using flat surface and you say the coordinates of the four points, you specify the bottom of the model. The second interface is the topography. Again, only four points used in this example because our topography is flat. In case you have real topography, complex topography, you, have put, you, can, you can put all points how, like as precise as you, you have information about the topography. You, you'll change number of x, c, and eta here, number of points, and the spacing between the points. So you can provide really uh, accurate representation of the topography. Here is flat, so not, nothing to worry about. And the elements. For, so we have, oh, uh, there is one, one thing. Actually, the first, the first interface is not the, at the bottom, but it's, it's the one after. So let me show you. The first interface corresponds to this layer, layer actually. Because the bottom interface is automatically uh, will be uh, exported by same number of elements. So this is the vertical slice of the mesh. Basically, the, the first interface corresponds to this depth, and the second to the to the topography. And you put additional information, number of layers for the first interface below it. So we'll we'll see number of interf layers, number of elements here is three below interface one and number of elements between interface one and two. So let's go back to, to that part file. So exactly that what uh, we observed on the mesh, we have three here, so number of elements below the first interface to the bottom. So we can put it four and the, the stretching will be disappear, the elements will be more equal in vertical direction, and nine elements between topography and the first interface. So this is interface file. And again, in by changing this file, you can introduce as many interfaces as you want, uh, like a buffer layer, bu buffer interface, which follows the topography to better handle the complex topographies. Yes. Uh, 
I think, yeah, it, it goes in X first and then in Y. The numbering of the, the interface, yeah, it goes in X, then in Y. So this is important, yeah, in, in point four. Yeah, yeah, it takes me few tests to figure out that the the ordering, but it's important to note, yeah, the order. And yeah, each interface, interface one, for instance, interface one. Dot. Yeah. Yeah, double layer. I will show you where you specify. Just the interfaces. We have two interfaces. Interface one. This is the depth where we, like, we specified four uh, coordinates, x and y coordinates, in the previous file, and here we specify depth for each point. So it's flat minus forty for interface one at uh, forty meters depth for four points. Yeah, you just put the actual coordinates of your of your interface through, as Carl said, through the x direction y first, and then uh, growing in y dimension. Only four points here. So this x one y one. This is x two y one. The, this x2, y1, and this x1, one, 1, y2, just uh, <laughs> to be easy to put on the coordinate. Remember, the ordering goes from x to y. And then the mesh part file, again, go back. So we looked at the interface uh, file, interface dot dot. We also specify number of elements, so it's internal measure. So it will build the mesh for us. So we specify the number of elements in x and y direction here. So you have 48 in in x direction and 24 in y direction. So we have this number of elements, and also we specify number of processors in x number of slices in x and y direction so we have six and uh, four and four so 16 in total and you have a regular mesh so doubling is not here is not used in this case as you remember the mesh there is no like transition where the horizontal size is doubled so to make the doubling layer, you put this as false and provide the coordinate, like layers, number of, first number of doublings and at location, at depth, where you want to have this doubling occur. So that index would be the interface where you want the doubling to occur and doubling one. So let's say we have one doubling like we put this to false, we put this to one, and if uh, this would be number of elements from the bottom. So we have 13, uh, in our case, 12 elements in, in three and nine between interfaces. So if we want to put the doubling uh, below interface one at the bottom, we put three elements, so the doubling will occur at the first interface, at the level of the first interface. It's number of elements, uh, how you specify the, the doubling. That's the way you specify the doubling. Is, that all, is this, are the details of this file format described in the manifest, or is it just here? Yeah. Uh, not everything, actually. The, most of the information is there. Where? In the in the manual in the manual so there, there is a manual I, I should mention very nice source of information so it's an in, in instruction uh, basically it's already in the package so you go to the when you download the package you go to doc 
user manual and there is a manual for spectrum 3 cartesian and also for the there is also a manual separate manual for the global version and for 2d 